Warning, this program contains frank, mature discussions intended to educate and advocate on the subjects of sexuality, sex, and gender and body positivity. Due to the nature of the topics being discussed, this may include subject matter and language that some may find offensive. This program is intended for adults only. If you are under the age of 18, if such material offends you, or if it is illegal to view such material in your community, please exit now. So I took a shot, and then they took a shot, and every time I took a shot, they took monkey, a shot. we're on. Oh, hi! Welcome to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show. <laughs> I am Monkey, and I am here with two of my fabulous co-hosts, Miss Jessely. Say hi. Hey, everyone. And Heather Beth. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, boy, we're all here. We're all here. This is a, actually a really fun show because we've come a long way in just a few months. We, we have, have right? but you wouldn't know it because Heather Beth is still wearing all her cl- Christmas what? clothes from last Why? season. I this just, is, you know what, the I just date couldn't it, face another year with Trump as president. I'm just going to pretend oh, like it's 2017 still. That got real. And so wearing Christmas stuff is the way you cope with that. That's right. Yes. That's, that's right. you self-soothe however you need I, to. I will. <laughs> and, and also petting the pig. Yes. So. Many yeah. things are being pet today. You will notice a slight difference between what I am petting and what Heather Beth is petting. Namely, mm. mine is breathing. Why do you got to make so many distinctions? Why can't they all just be animals? They're like, just, just equal, but validate the I'm realness just, of my a animal difference. too. God. Hashtag multiculturalism. <laughs> Hashtag oh. speciesism. Together we are united. <laughs> Hashtag speciesism. <laughs> okay. But yes, we, we have our uh, stage manager with us here today joining us on stage. Taking a break. Taking a break. No, no, she's making sure that we're all, you know, staying on target. Making sure we're you know, she's, clean. She's a real busy, a little real busy dog. She actually helped, like, consult with my wardrobe today. She accessorized my tights, so. Well, very cool. Yeah. So, so what is today's show about? <laughs> today's show is about looking back and moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, we, so, <laughs> looking back, looking forward, moving forward. So we're going to look back at some of the uh, things that happened throughout the year. We're going to interview each other and uh, see what we thought, how we got started in all this. Um, you guys are going to interview me. We're going to interview some other people. Everyone's getting interviewed. Um, Everyone's getting interviewed whether they like it or not. You just, yeah. Even the pig. You never know what's going to happen. But then we're also going to be looking forward and telling you <laughs> what we're going to be doing to make the show better, mm-hmm. some of the themes we have coming up, some of the ideas that we're changing, some of the things to bring the... Show. To I us. just moved it because I'm swiveling my chair. Calm down. I get very nervous around <laughs> Jessely. I, I don't know why. I only attacked you once when you were driving. <laughs> when I, was driving. <laughs> oh. I just leaned into it, you know. You leaned into it and attacked. Yes. <laughs> oh, I meant the bit that I just said that made no sense. Wow. So there was, there, there was <laughs> unlike your car that crashed and burned a while back in, in, in a small heap out. I'm glad to hear we haven't forgotten about that. That's incident. right. Um, my car, I only ran into a stump, and so thank you for that. The insurance company's still going to be contacting you about that. So. Okay. Well, if they ask me any questions, I'll be too stumped to answer. Ah, <sighs> that hurt. <laughs> and I liked it at the same time. Okay, um, when we come back, we're going to be interviewing, guess who, Heather Beth. <gasps> That's right. We're going to ask you a ton of questions. Oh, I no. Prepared. I'm so stressed out by that. Be I'm stressed. Just kidding. I'm excited. She doesn't look stressed out at all. <laughs> no, no she doesn't. But I'm, it's because she I will have, be. I'm not stressed because I have a brown chicken brown cow cup full of booze. Oh. oh. Surprising, surprising. So do I. Mine just has water in it. What the fuck? You got ripped off. I got ripped off. <laughs> we can fix that after the break. Cool. Hey, welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow podcast, your favorite sex positive podcast. Uh, we're here now, and it's time for us to grill <laughs> Heather Beth with questions. Oh, no. Uh, some of them may be terrifying, and some of them may be just normal questions, but we'll have to wait to find out. Terrifying and normal. <laughs> cool. So question one, what's your social security number? Yes. All right, great. You passed. <laughs> and your mother's maiden name. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So, I like to answer either or questions with yes. That makes sense. So, so let's let's start with you know what interested you about this project, about creating the show. Well, you badgered me into it. No, uh, you monkeyed me into it. So um, that is fair. you suggested that I would be a good person to help out with the project because I'm a sex geek and I hang out in sex positive spaces. And so sometimes I 
can get us some interesting guests. And that was the premise upon which I became involved with the show. And then all of a sudden I was co-hosting and it's okay, it's been fun. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Were we yeah. all just like kidnapped and like into doing this Monkey show? napped. I arrived here in a burlap sack <laughs> and I didn't know what I was doing. It was a very big burlap sack. It had a drink bar. <laughs> Well, I, I do appreciate the accommodation. I mean, I must say, I, I, I like that we get fun swag. Mm -hmm. I do it all for the swag is really why I do it. Swag. Swag, swag stuff we all get, yes. So what about the, uh, <clears throat> yeah. since, since we've been doing it for about seven months now. Has it been seven months? It's been pretty close to seven I, months. Right? Wow. wow. Yeah, our first, I think, believe our first episode was in June. Right, and now it's totally January. It's totally January. Yeah. So that would be seven months. <laughs> All right, we need to come clean. It's not January. Like, we can't just not tell them, right? It's, it's not January. It's not January. It's January. It's February. Do not expose the magic of cinema. We can't just make an inside joke and then not explain it to the audience like a bunch of assholes. All right, fine. <laughs> it's not January. Everything is a lie. The professor has lied. <laughs> the cake this is a lie. This isn't even a real dog. Not even real. But this is a real pig. Damn it. I liked taking a month away from you every month. <laughs> I see wow. how it is. Wow. <laughs> the madam is so mean. No, um, <clears throat> yes, but what? What were we talking what about? What were we even seven, talking it's about? It's been seven months, yes. It's been seven months. So um, what have been some of your favorite things about the show so far? Let's talk about that. Ah. <sighs> Okay, well, I really enjoy when we're here doing the vodcasting in person mm -hmm. and we, some of the podcasting that we've done in person. It's just really fun. I feel like we have such a fun, like, dynamic, such fun energy together. I love all of you all. You're Aww. fun. Um, so that's one thing. <clears throat> I just feel really energized after afterwards whenever we, whenever we get together with the team. Um, to and then, yeah, we've just also had some really incredible guests on that have been really fun to interview, mm -hmm. and I've got to, like, fangirl a lot about that, so that's been exciting, yeah. Why, <laughs> why do you feel like, if you do feel this way, this podcast is a good fit for you? Ooh. Mm. I think I like, oh gosh, that's a good question. So, I think two things are coming to mind. One, I really like the lightheartedness of it, because I feel like it makes it more accessible. Like, I spend a lot of time in academia and mental health talking about, like, social issues and injustice and all this stuff, which is important. But I think it, I really think that humor and um, lightheartedness is really important as well, and I like that we could take serious topics and kind of blend some laughter into it. Um, because, you know, I don't know about you all, but maybe people don't want to just sit and listen to people be sad about social problems for an hour. <laughs> they want to they yeah. they laugh, right? They want to learn and laugh at the same time. So I like that. Absolutely. <clears throat> and then also, I think the other thing is, I like that there's, like, constantly room for expansion and growth. I feel like we're constantly discovering things through our conversations here um, and behind the scenes about things that we want to continue doing and, and new areas to grow into. And so I'm really excited about looking forward as well. So... Awesome. Yeah. So, um, speaking, you, you kind of hit on it a little bit, a little mm -hmm. bit of your background. Can you, you know, share for the audience just a little bit of who you are and what you do? And I'm not a real person. I don't exist outside of this podcast. So I don't. I'm just like, like I said, nothing magic, is real. Yeah, like I'm like a magic elf that comes to life. A magic during elf. The, um, is, 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 is that why the? Uh, well. This is what I wear all the time. Oh. This is what I'm most comfortable with all the time that I'm existing, which is during this podcast. So, so is it between that and vagina dresses <laughs> or, or vulva dresses? Thank you for thank you for for correcting yes. this important <laughs> distinction there. We did, I don't know if we made that distinction. The vagina is on the inside. Yes. The vulva is everything. It's all the magic. The vagina is <laughs> only the inside magic. Right? <laughs> What did you ask me again? <laughs> uh, your background. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, IRL in real life. I am, what am I? I'm a social worker. I'm a sex educator. I uh, took a sex educator training a few years ago so that I am um, literally unembarrassable about topics around sex. Well, don't challenge me on I that. I was just going to say meter. challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people can ask me any questions that they want to about their sex lives, and I'm happy to answer. Um, awesome. So, yes, I'm a sex educator, I'm a social worker, and I, I, I see clients, and I also uh, teach social work and sexuality at a local fine educational institution close to where we are recording this podcast. And I can honestly <laughs> say that's... One of the big reasons why you were invited to come onto the show. Oh, thank you. You know, not only are you a sex geek, 
um, but you will also have the the chops and the professional experience to talk about these things. Mm, thank you. Unlike me, who's just a geek. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something to be said for lived experience as well, right? Like I think that um, that it's important to balance, you know, theoretical conceptual learning with with practice, and mm -hmm. so you know we've got a good balance of different skills on this in this team here. Right. <clears throat> totally. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, what are some of your lessons that maybe you've learned from doing this podcast or from listening to people on the podcast or oh, vodcast? Wow. What have I learned? Mm -hmm. hmm. I would like a 5,000 page essay. 5,000? Word essay. <laughs> you know what? No, I said page first. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> only 5,000 pages? That's only like 20 dissertations. It's fine. I can do that. <laughs> mm. I've never written a dissertation. I don't even know if I want to. <laughs> lessons learned. Um... Never assume the camera's not on. Hmm. <laughs> As we just learned. Yeah, we recently. may learn about more on that subject a little later in the show. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I think that was a good segue. I did that on purpose. Yeah. Um, never assume the camera's not on. Um, there's always more to learn about sexuality. I think it's sort of something I kind of knew, but I'm being reminded of that. Mm -hmm. What else have I learned? Uh, there's a lot more that goes into making a, a podcast and video show than just showing up and doing it. Even though I'm grateful that I kind of just get to show up and, and do it most of the time mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's kind of it's a little bit of work but it's really fun so mm -hmm. I don't know I'm ruining the magic again I guess <laughs> just <laughs> well, kidding well, we this, just, we a, just, this just happens this is kind of a BTS episode we're exactly. doing a behind That's, the scenes sort we're of kind thing of exposing so. the, oh, BT, I was like, we're kind of looking behind BTS. the curtain, yes. curtain a little bit on this episode so yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. cool um, uh, so moving forward <clears throat> looking towards where we're going and, and where we've been yeah. and where we can add on and do things differently or better or communicate to the <laughs> audience? What, where do you think we should go with that? Um, I'm always one for, so as, as a social worker, I'm always looking at my six core values of social work practice, and one of them is social justice. So we've got mm -hmm. social justice, dignity of the individual. Y'all are going to learn about social work today, you didn't know, but Ooh, value so of human stoked. relationships, right? It's <clears throat> awesome. So I feel like we, we cover some of those things. Competence, right? So learning. Um, <clears throat> integrity, so sticking close to our values, and why am I failing what the sixth one is? Oh, no. Oh, it's service, good. right? So we're providing a service. So mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like the lens that I look at this show through, and so just continuing to um, live up to those values. And so a big social work value is diversity. So we've done some work <clears throat> around um, disability, and I think we might want to continue doing work around disability in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking to, one of the things I want to bring to the show is a lot more diversity, right? So. Um, so that means a lot of different things. It means ability, disability, it means race and ethnicity, it means social class. There's just like so many social issues that intersect with sexuality and I want to talk about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and have on a wide variety of guests. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and that's awesome because I know in coming months we do have, but we're hitting a lot of those other subjects, mm -hmm. including uh, where we're going to be bringing people that we've had on in the past back, like Andrew Gerson. Yeah. So we're bringing him back on um, to do yes. a whole another month to deep so in, to dig in deeper. Because when we first got started, we didn't have a lot of time right. to do the disability and the mental health right. aspects. So we're going to be digging in deeper into those type of topics. So I am so cool. stoked about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And gender. We've been talking about gender, and there's like so much more to explore with that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm excited. Awesome. Lots of cool stuff on the horizon. Yes. All right. Well, are we ready to talk to our or hear from our sponsors? Or? No, no. This isn't a sponsor break. No. No, no, no. We, we well, we, I guess we do have sponsors. Who knows? But I do know <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I thought just we had a musical um, guest and a sponsor coming up. But exactly. I could be wrong. We have Sam Sam Every Shepherd from one of our Sam earlier, Sharp. Sam, Sam Shepherd is a famous American playwright. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, sh shaving cream. Brown chicken, um, brown cotton. <laughs> well, we're so on point. No, uh, Sam Sharp. Um, well, she came on one of our earlier episodes. <laughs> she did, and she was amazing. Um, uh, she was I, so amazing that we thought we would <laughs> increase her status by comparing her with another a famous, famous American person. Of course. They're practically the same person. I compare myself to Sean Connery, <laughs> which is not the best thing to do. Um, Exact same person. The madam is 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 looking at him like he's crazy. Who? You. You. You're the only I'm, him here. Unless I'm crazy. We're about the uh, see, they they, they <laughs> have uh, blocked my view of the uh, technical booth. They have. Um, so here at the uh, brown chicken. Is that because you blush all the time? No, no, no. But the brown no. chicken brown cow studios it are is. only so big. So 
she's trying to make me blush. Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. I, don't even I believe I that's an extra blush for the uh. blush on You know what happens when someone, when someone blushes on this show? Mm. You throw things at them. Well, yes. <laughs> also, the monkey blush meter goes ding, ding, ding. And people can tip us on Patreon if they would like to. Why would people maybe tip us on Patreon? What happens if people support us on Patreon? We get money, <clears throat> and that helps us to improve the podcast yes. and expand and gradually take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to be part of the new BCBC World Order? Yes, you would. Get on our good side while the getting is good. All I'm saying is there are worse world orders that have existed. Yeah. And now Sam <laughs> Sharp. Always a guy just there to play You can smell his arrogance from a mile away So how I become the number one candidate Attracting them like I'm wearing some kind of magnet I hate going out on the town This is what always goes down Mr. Man number one looking like a clown A beer glue to his hands, feet dragging on the ground He winds up with his introduction He makes it like some big production believe in love at first sight or do I need to walk by you another time tonight hey baby give me a sign will you be mine look first off my name is not baby I have been falling for a pickup plan lately excuse me grabbing me there in a handshake take your cockiness and just vacate ain't no one else to blame that your whole plan blew up in flames too many guys To be worse. Try to salvage the night We're gonna go dancing and looking around Throwing anxious glances Sure enough he follows me out to the floor Thinking to myself Could there be any more And his dance moves They're like no other I hate to break it to you But you are not usher Says baby and he comes starts to sway I have to say look first off my name is not baby I have been falling for a pit of mine lately excuse me grabbing me there in a handshake take your cockiness and just vacate ain't no one else to blame that your whole plan blew up the plan too many guys like you and I have a with the BCBC podcast. Now, uh, I know you're sitting there thinking, what could David possibly tell me about condoms that I don't already know? Here's a fact. Do you get a condom that delivers to you monthly? I don't think you do. But you, if you order Lucky Blow condoms, they're great. They'll get you through whatever you need to do. And when you're done, no worries. There's no babies coming out of nothing. That's a fact. You can quote me on that. David Lorette Damola says, buy Lucky Bloat condoms. You'll never regret it.
Welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Vodcast, your favorite Woo. sex positive talk show. Yeah. We're here in the barnyard today with our co host, David. Hey, yeah, I had a, a little bit of a family issue uh, a while back, but I'm back. Yay! New Year! We yeah. heart Yay. you. <laughs> and of course, our beautiful co host, Jessely. Jessely, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm so fantastic. I'm petting a pig. Great. <laughs> we all just have our little barnyard animals here. Yeah. We do. Oh, so, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, fantastic. So today we're sort of doing a retrospective and a looking forward. We are looking back and moving forward, or we could say we're moving back and looking forward, but I think it's probably the, I'm not, anyway. That um, sounds ca- like hard to do. There's motion and looking. There's the motion, time. there's viewing, <laughs> there's direction. moving. There's things, yes, yes. So David, who are we who are we interviewing next? Well, we're gonna interview mm. Jessely. Yeah, we are. That yep, we're <laughs> gonna interview Jessely. How you doing over there, Jessely? You you ready? I'm, I'm so ready. Because I've got a whole list of questions and we're gonna get real here. Great, I'm ready to get real. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> well, question number one then. Yeah. What brought you to Brown Chicken Brown Cow? Um, well, Monkey approached me and was like, I want to do this thing. Um, and he told me all about it. And uh, he uh, <laughs> kind of knew about my entertainment background and told me all about the concept of the show. And so I was I was like, let's do it, because I consider myself to be a sex positive person. So. And a team player. Thank you. I and like I you. have done podcasts <laughs> before. Ooh. What? <laughs> do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, tell sure. us about the podcast. About that. <laughs> sure. So I run a sketch comedy, a sketch and improv comedy group called That Plus Chips. And uh, we have our own podcast called Crunch Time with That Plus Chips. Uh, and we've been on hiatus for quite a bit, um, but we usually do uh, improv, sketch comedy. Um, we do a talk show about comedy, uh, and then we also do advice, uh, with terrible advice, on our show. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I have uh, know the whole podcast game, but vodcasts are very new to me, and so this is awesome. Yeah, you actually have to care what you look like. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, it is. Unlike me, I'm just like, hmm, yeah. Christmas sweater, dog hair tights. Okay, we're good. Me. Let's do this. Let's roll. <laughs> I think Jessely's the only fashionable one. I gave up a long time ago. I know. Gives Why? me an outlet for my vanity. Why even try? <laughs> Speaking of fashion, let me ask the vapid question here. Ooh. How oh. often do you plan your wardrobe? Because you always come in oh. with something really classy and fun. How mm-hmm. often do I plan my wardrobe? Yeah. Yeah. Are you asking me like how premeditated my I wardrobe I is? I assume, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, assume that like fashionable people are premeditated with their. <laughs> um, I mean, <either. laughs> that's I get what you're saying. Um, I'm I don't really plan my person. outfits very far in advance. I just like wear what I'm feeling. So mm-hmm. some days I'm feeling a little bit more edgy. Sometimes I'm feeling like more conservative. Sometimes I'm feeling more like femme. Sometimes I'm feeling less so. <laughs> Um, today I wanted to match Heather Beth uh, because I knew that she was going to be wearing Christmas yeah. attire, yeah. and so I was like, "Well, I at least want to be red." How do you want to be red? <laughs> I want to be red like a respectable person. Oh, mm. fail! Just kidding. Yeah, very um, fail. <laughs> very <laughs> fail. I'm not doing that right. I respect you, but I respect Thanks. you for not being typical and normative. Thank you. So, Thanks. If that's like a that is an excellent way of compliment. Saying you're re- I respect you. You're respectable. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so you're respectable, and that is a segue into asking you why. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like let's just like take a tangent away from the interview for a second. You guys are doing great. I just love you both. Speaking of cows, <laughs> thank you. I enjoy beef. Next question. I don't eat beef. <laughs> well, <laughs> damn it. I boycott it. God, David. <laughs> Wait, you don't we eat beef? We didn't ruin the interview. I, I don't eat are you, beef. Are you like vegetarian, vegan? No, let's I get, get asked that all this. the time. Okay, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's digress. Um, I actually, I do, do boycott that. beef. I eat all other meat except for, I don't like, se- <laughs> I just don't like seafood. It's so, I'm sorry, you're just, stop being delicious. Um, hashtag victim. Good claiming. job. <laughs> Good job, you scared the pig, um, I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't eat beef. I boycott it because uh, of the environmental... <laughs> Scared the chicken. I just don't eat beef, okay? You're gonna scare I and our producer. Wait, what is she? Stage manager next. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat the dog. The cow feels okay though. He's mm-hmm. happy. Well, yeah, she doesn't eat beef. I don't eat beef, yeah. so everything's right, so. good. <clears throat> so anyway, that was all a segue <laughs> into asking you <laughs> why why do you think that <clears throat> brown chicken brown cow is a good fit for you? Like what how does this 
fit <laughs> into my life. Great, great so question. Good at this. Great question. Yeah, um, I, I paid uh, a million dollars to be here. I'm oh. so good. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing, Heather Beth, and I love you. you. Um, I consider myself to be a pretty sex positive person. Um, I. Um, I have my own sort of, <laughs> this is gonna make me sound like I'm a superhero. I have my own identity uh, that I, I'm um, working more toward, to kind of get a little personal here. Mm -hmm. um, I've adopted this sort of, more of this philosophy, especially this year about being um, more honest about myself and living more authentically. And Rock so, out. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and so um, I feel like this podcast is a good fit for me because it allows me to sort of um, move forward in a direction that I feel like most of our society should be nice. moving forward in, uh, which is being open and honest about things that we should be able to be open and honest about. And uh, so that's why I consider myself to be sex positive. And I am really stoked to be on this podcast because I feel like it identifies a lot with my own values. That's so fantastic. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Plus, you do the snap point thing. I do. I can't stop but it. You're, <laughs> makes you a good fit. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's yeah. the only reason I was asked so. on. <laughs> yeah. Like we've got, we've got audience point. members doing the <laughs> gesture. Not monkeys doing it from the audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I've actually I've been curious about something because yeah. I've been on here for less time than you. You actually are the reason why I jumped in. Yeah. So uh, I was wondering if you have any like favorite experiences, favorite moments that have happened over the whole time. <sighs> Um, all the times that we have eaten donuts, <laughs> um, those were some really important That's moments to me Jamie, because I... All the times you creepily stared at the camera while you ate a donut. I have no idea mean? what you're talking oh, about. Okay. That <laughs> absolutely will not happen in, the, like, the rest of this episode. Oh. <laughs> um, honestly, I, I think it's really beautiful just seeing people, um, being able to kind of express and share who they are. And I feel like the people that we bring on this show, um... They're already, uh, not to say this is necessarily more of a positive thing, but they're already pretty far in their journey of self-discovery. Mm. Um, and I think that's really powerful to hear people. Sure. Uh, yeah, people who are, who are like that yeah. um, because they're so self-assured and um, obviously they're so sex positive that, mm. that hearing them talk about what they do and who they are, it's just, it's just totally. normal for them. And that's such a beautiful thing. And I really feel like... Uh, getting to hear that and getting to have mm -hmm. our listeners hear that is really, um, just really powerful. Yeah. I have like a little sub question from that. Cause I know mm -hmm. for myself, um, that listening to sex positive podcasts actually was really inspiring to me. And like, you know, there's different media through which people learn about themselves, like blogs or YouTube or whatever. But I know for myself, like I, a lot of sex positive podcasts were really influential to me. So are there any other like, was that something that was important for you, was to hear other people or to see other people as examples? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I, I, um, I identify as polyamorous, and so I listen to a lot of poly podcasts. Mm, and cool. to hear, that's actually how I, like, uh, started first diving into polyamory was I listened to podcasts. Mm. And for me, podcasts are just, like, a really digestible form of media. Mm. Um, so to get to hear people talk about uh, that form of sexuality... Um, in a, like a really open and earnest way was really cool for me. Um, and I feel like I learned so much from that. And I like, I don't know how I would be living my life without those resources. So Very cool. yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but I said a bunch of words in order. <laughs> you did say words in order. I'm into that. Awesome. <laughs> That's the important part. Can I, uh, can I just ask, I, I hope it's not delving in too deep. I was wondering if you could talk about your experience with polyamory, like what it's been like. <sighs> Absolutely. Absolutely, David. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I've been polyamorous for, I think, I believe, like, three years now, so I'm still a pretty new, new to poly. But, um, but uh, for me, it just became a matter of um, living my life in a way that seemed most logical to me and most authentic to me. Again, I kind of mm -hmm. mentioned that I have this sort of, like, mission to live my life in the most authentic way possible and to live it sort of unapologetically. Yeah. Or unap unapologetically, ah. which is a phrase that I stole, and I, I don't want to get... Wait, I, wait, I stole I that what, phrase. Wait, I, I, we, I, I, see, I see... You what see you what there. I did there? I, I did, I saw that. Thank you. Um, can I high-five you? Yes, you can, but I, I can't take credit for it, because someone else's <laughs> podcast came up with the term. It's I'll just, just let you know the professor spewed over that. <laughs> Did he spew? Yes. Can we get a meter <laughs> for that? Yeah, do we get a professor spew meter? Honestly, I feel like... I don't know. I was, I feel like I was I need spewing to... my margarita for the record. Oh, okay. man, that's a terrible thing to spew. I know. Maybe have less margaritas? Don't waste the booze. What? I don't know if I'm the problem is what Jeez. I'm saying. <laughs> um, 
What the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, I stole that from the Multi Emery podcast, okay. by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but I like <laughs> love that term, so I got really excited about it. Um, Super cool. So yeah, um, trying to think. Just of talking about your experience with polyamory. Though. Oh yeah. yeah, no, I just I I don't know I don't quite know what else to say about it. Um, yeah. I'm openly poly and I love it and it's amazing and it's made I feel like poly has made me a better person and I feel cool. like it's allowed my, me to have a richer more a life more full of love that's yeah. very cool yeah I like it that is actually a good segue as opposed to some of the like forced segues that I might have made earlier <laughs> into talking about moving forward I know that we're, we're gonna have different um you know, we like to, ha to have some themes to our shows, and so I think we're going to be For having sure. a, or we are currently having a, because it's already January, because we are okay, time isn't a, let's do the time warp again, that's not in the public domain, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I think moving forward, yes. So in, in the under future, three we bars are going is acceptable for educational purposes. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Now you've all been educated about yes. the time. I'm not going to get sued. And we just educated you on copyright theory. So. <laughs> <laughs> and are you falling off? No, you're just no. leaving me. No. Frank and Furter is a Disney princess now. But anyway, um, <laughs> so. Moving forward, so in February, we're going to be having a, um, our theme of the month is going to be polyamory. Yes, that was I'm a so very, excited. That was the world's longest segue into asking you about what you would like to see moving forward with our, oh, our pod podcast man. project. Oh, man. Um, sorry, I'm like already talking over you. You're um, fantastic. Uh, You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I've been loving the topics that we've been talking about on mm -hmm. the podcast and the podcast. Um, two things that I, in particular, would really love to see is I would uh, love to see, I feel like there's a... Um, more of like a rising and expanding cannabis culture. And mm. I feel like there are many ways that that mm. intersects with sexuality nowadays. And I would really, really, um, I'm a big proponent of cannabis. And so I would really love to see those things uh, talked about on the podcast a little bit. Um, and then also just like a mm. random small thing. Um, I'm really, I, I don't know how prevalent this actually is, but I would love to talk to someone who identifies as ecosexual. Um, ah. And I would love to hear more about that because Fantastic. I feel like currently that's a sexuality that I see getting a lot of heat even from people who consider themselves to be sex positive and so I would really love to like uh, shed some light on that cool what is uh, we have I think that the madam is asking about what ecosexual is yeah. can I share a little bit about my knowledge or do you want to talk absolutely. about absolutely no please <laughs> Go for Please it. Please educate. I'm yeah. curious. Well, so from my understanding, it means that you have a sexual connection with nature or maybe you're like sexually oriented toward nature. Oh. So I believe, I could be wrong about this. Here could be potential, a potential for a future guest. I believe that um, Annie Sprinkle, who's pretty prominent in the sex positive and porn world, um, identifies as an ecosexual, and I think she's even maybe like made a documentary about it. So mm. I'd love to get her on maybe as a guest that's in the so future cool. if you're interested in that. Oh, that would um, be amazing. I also have an idea for the for cannabis and sexuality guest. Oh, for you, so. yeah. I don't know. Okay, cool. They keep me around for a reason. Sometimes I think of things. But Sometimes. we're talking about you right now. How are you doing? How's yeah. this going for you? I, I'm so great. I'm really enjoying this. Yay. <laughs> so is the stage manager. She just came by and was like, you may thank me for my services now. Her allegiance <laughs> has shifted. She was on my lap for a long time. Yeah. Mm. And now my lap is cold. Oh, here, you let me... Oh, you guys are Aww. so nice. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't give her the picture. Yeah, no, that's why it. I gave her the cow, not the <laughs> chicken. <you>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, God. A lot of conclusions she never being also, jumped to. She never even said she doesn't eat dogs. She said she eats all the animals except cows. cows. No, so, I did fair, literally say I'm not going to... I literally did say that. Also God, rats. You guys never listen also to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You okay, made it's Madam Sad. Now. Wow, wow. Oh. <laughs> okay, we love you, Jeff Lee. Hearts. hearts. I love you guys too. Oh my god, I love that we all did hearts that were not like the normative heart. <laughs> wow. Oh no. Oh, oh yes. All the things. <laughs> I would I would laugh so hard if you just took a huge bite out of that. I would Ow. not. And just stuffing Ow. everywhere. Oh yeah. well, no. Damn. Well, she's definitely not going to do any kind of creepy donut thing later, so we also yeah. don't have to worry about that. Um, so, okay, any final thoughts before we kind of wrap this segment up and check out our musical guest and um, and our sponsor? Any any final thoughts, Jessely, about your experiences so far, thoughts for the future? Oh, snap. Um, this has just been awesome, and I am distracted by an adorable dog who's rolling around on the floor. Um, I, 
that's that's one of my other favorite parts of this podcast. <laughs> um, no, it's been an amazing journey so far, and I'm really, really excited to see where we go. And I feel okay. really, really honored to be a part of this and to have gotten to know um, mostly Heather Beth. I've known the rest of you. Well, and Todd and Lee, oh, or whoever we're talking about. I'm going to stop talking now and eat this pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll be back. <laughs> Yes, we will be back. We're gonna go take a. Uh, we're gonna take a break, and I need. To, I'm gonna think for a moment about who our musical guest is gonna be. Our musical guest is gonna be Yerky, Stephen Yerky, re re bringing back his Dynaflow boogie, and also we're gonna hear from our sponsor, which keeps us alive, along with yeah. you and your support of Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com. Search for Brown Chicken Brown Cow Podcast. We love you. Bye. It's a song I wrote with uh, Chris and Lance Campbell in the, uh, along about 1980, somewhere in there in San Francisco. It's called Not Donna Flo Boogie, and the Donna Flo is the uh, name for the uh, automatic transmission in the Buick that they came up with right after World War II. Let's go. Oh, some of you people heard about Donna Flow. Say here, it's called a Donna Flow, Donna Flow Boogie. My daddy and mom, they decided to go. Well, it's down to Bluefield in the Donna Flow, Donna Flow Boogie. You're up on top of the hill, better back that thing in. Put the emergency brake on, you want to see it again. Down the flow boogie. Well, in front of these doors, it's like a cage in the cage. And got Philly and the gumbo and the band's amazing. Down the flow boogie. Hell play up, playing seven up. A Marine won the money and is scared to pick it up on the dark low boogie. Well, a Marine said something about the dignity of man. Uh, he really said something that he couldn't understand. Down a low boogie. Marine pulled a gun and he began to curse. Everybody hit the deck and it couldn't have been worse on the Donna Flo Boogie. I staggered out the front door, fell across the hood, and when he died, he had the pink slip. Everybody understood. It was just that old Donna Flo Boogie. They passed out fans at the funeral home. He was like a hello, shimmered off the cone. Well, if all you know was what's on the radio, what happened when the battery on charge and the lights get low. The road is so quiet and the lightning bugs glow. Flash on the fan on the dash to the old line of flow.
Boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. This is Sean Monkey Mackinney. Monkey for short. You know what? If you're in town here in Sacramento or if you're anywhere, you need to check out Midtown Moxies. They are a Sacramento burlesque troupe that is blowing my doors off. They are amazing. Generally, they have two shows a month. One called Midtown Moxies and one called Moxie Crush. You need to go to MidtownMoxies.com or find them on Facebook. They are amazing. They're beautiful. They're funny as hell. Trust me, I wouldn't be advertising with them if I didn't believe in them. They are freaking fantastic. Enough said. Go to MidtownMoxies.com. What are you doing? Are you cuddling? Okay, go back to it. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show. I am Monkey, and next up, we're interviewing, guess who? Jess Lee again? No! Oh, David dang. again! Yay! What? <laughs> David again. Wait. <laughs> David always. David forever. David Tennant. Four more years. Four, Four more, more years. years. <laughs> Yes, right. we're interviewing David Lorette Demola, oh, who's on our podcast with us today. Uh, we've got some excellent questions to ask him. Um, David, why don't you tell us a little bit about your personal background? Yeah, um, I am an asexual spoken word performance poet who uh, I've been in the National Poetry Slam. I just got featured on Button Poetry this year, which is mm. huge. If you don't know what Button Poetry is, it's the biggest national uh, purveyor of videos. Congratulations, so, yeah. that's awesome. Super excited about it. Um, also, I sing and I do a whole number of things with a group called Zero Forbidden Goals. And yeah. yeah, community work, arts work, and also a little bit with that plus chips with a little person named Jess Lee. Who's oh, that? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. But um, Just saying, with the singing talent on the stage right now, we should have BC, BC the musical. Oh! I'm just saying. I'll start writing it. All right, perfect. <laughs> It's time to learn about sex. Sex, <laughs> sex, 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 sex. <laughs> so with that, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved with BCBC? Yeah, uh, there was a carrier pigeon that came, no. Um, Jess Lee actually here is the reason why I even know about this podcast. That's I am, uh, and the reason why I'm here actually. She uh, was looking for, well, Brown Chicken, Brown Cow was looking for another host, uh, co-host. And she hit me up because we have extensive improv background together. We do. And uh, yeah, it's on my end, what really drew me to it is I'm asexual, but I've always been intellectually curious about sex. So this is my chance to really learn. I was a, a babe in the woods with no <laughs> knowledge of things of like polyamory or um, even what just a lot of the LGBTQIA experience plus experience. So um, this has been a great education for me, and I'm really glad I joined. Yeah. Yay. We're glad you joined, too. Yeah. Very much glad. Yeah, so you started just a, a few episodes after we got started. Yeah. Right? Um, but you've made a major contribution, a major impact on the show. Um, your energy is just uh, through the roof whenever you're on. Please continue. I know. <laughs> you're wonderful. <laughs> you're marvelous, darling. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. So... Um, what have been some of your favorite experiences so far on the show? Like maybe a guest or, or moments that you've enjoyed? Oh, gosh. Okay, I, I love just the, and obviously for the most part, except for our bloopers reel, you won't be able to see it, but our between cut banter is just wonderful. It's the pretty stories fun. we share. Um, inter, or getting to talk to Andrew Gerza and learning about disabilities after dark is just, I've been listening to that podcast ever since I got to talk to him and just, Absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And just all the interesting people you get to meet, like Sister Vagilistic Expialidocious. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Some, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I, I'm glad you got it better than I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I stumble on it every single time. I was so excited tough. when I found out about the Sisters of uh, the Perpetual, Perpetual Indulgence. Indulgence, yes. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so why do you feel like this podcast is a g good fit for you? Well, I mean, it's a whole, kind of what I was saying before, it, it's a whole realm that I've never really gotten to experience before or talk about. And uh, it's my chance to really talk about asexual things, to learn about the world around me, and to just do something positive. I mm -hmm. think this is a really positive message that we're trying to put out. 
uh, one of many voices that are trying to put out a good message about sex and that it's not scary or weird or creepy. It's completely 100% normal. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's rad having you on, too, because we want people to know that, like, being asexual, you're still part of the sex positive umbrella. Absolutely. You're still under that umbrella. You're still <laughs> under that hat, you might say. Oh, my God. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing an ace hat. Yeah. This is it's the pretty ace. cool. Oh. That's the ace flag. My friend yeah. River. Hi, River. Uh, oh, did River make it. that for you? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> it's, a ra- it's a really cool hat. Props to the hat and to River for making it for you. Absolutely. Sweet. I'm, ex- I'm doing an exchange because I, uh, I design shirts, if you hadn't noticed. Oh, um, yes. And um, I have one that's asexual, so it says ace, and then it has all the identities therein underneath. So, so cool. it's a little bit of a trade off. So cool. Yeah. Um, what are some of your, well, okay, so y- you talked a little bit about uh, talking to Andrew Garza and the sisters of, or one of the sisters from the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. What are some of your other favorite experiences on the, on the podcast? Oh, gosh. I mean, Donut Time is always a personal favorite Hell of mine. Yeah. But how could you not? Like, I didn't know about it until the first time I came here to film, because Jessely gave me no information going in. She just <laughs> said, be here, and we're going to talk about sex. And I was like, sure, why not? No, she gave me more than that. But um, no. I didn't know about donuts. And I sat down. He'd never had I a saw donut. the box. I'd never had a donut. It had never just, it was just sweet breads before that. Just sweet breads. Sweet breads. <laughs> just a loaf of bread with just some with sugar, sugar on, on top. Oh, I, I was going for the sweet breads. <laughs> never mind. Moving on. <laughs> The organs. Inside. Oh God! Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I have a story to go with this. I, I for yes. last year for Christmas, I had just I had just got engaged, and so we were all celebrating at like a family dinner thing that my fiance's family throws. And I, I was at work, and he texted me and was like, "Hey, we're about to order. What do you want?" Because I, I had to come late, and I was like, "Ah!" He sent me a photo of the menu. I was like, "Ah, sweet breads. That sounds really <laughs> like tasty. I love sweet breads." <laughs> it was not sweet bread. No. 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 Oh my God. It I think they're intestines. delicious, but... As long as there was no beef in it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're glands. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> it's glands. Why is everyone giving me shit about protecting the environment? You uh, understand well, me. Well, speaking of protecting the environment... Yes, yes. Here's an awkward uh, segue. Um, <laughs> the two of you are actually going to be start working on moving forward um, uh, uh, for our blog process, and, you know, the, the blog that we're going to start creating. You're going to be start doing what with that? Well, uh, as I understand it now, we haven't really been able to sit down and talk about it, but I love the concept of doing product reviews Mm -hmm. for different utilities that you use in the bedroom. Yeah, this is uh, with good vibrations. So, yeah, yeah, a little partner. Quite excited so, for this endeavor. Oh yeah. So the point, the two different po- talk about the two different points of view that you're uh, going to be addressing uh, oh. on different products. Well, I mean, from my end, I'm asexual, mm-hmm. and it's. Uh, I never really got introduced to what sex toys and such are before this because uh, it just never really came up, you know, being ace. But it's a part of my life. I've had partners in the past. We've had sexual things going on, and they would bring in toys, and I'd be like, okay. And it was a scary experience for me, even though it shouldn't be. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited. Uh, we're going to be doing a once-a-month blog post, uh, and we're going to be doing it um, both from David's perspective as an asexual man uh, and then from my perspective as a bisexual, pansexual woman, uh, me teaching David that not all sex toys go up your ass. I just, I on it, okay, that's real, though. Like, I just assumed that it was just everything. Just meant to go up your ass, I mean, yeah. you got these things and these things and, and, and those everything things. Everything is, there's prongs on wait, things. You those don't know. Things? Is that like a scapula no, or whatever that's it's called? Ca- that's called it's the high dive. <laughs> oh, it's the high dive. <laughs> Thought it was the jaws of life. It's just, oh. Dear God, no one uses that <laughs> for toys. Okay, that's okay. For, for pain only, ow. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad I know that. Having flashes to ob Pain only, ow. Pain only, ow. So we're going to be doing that post, uh, just contrasting our experiences and me slowly showing David how things are actually used. And uh, we're really excited for that. Yeah, no. So, David, what else would you like to see the show move into or talk about or expand on moving forward? Um, gosh, I mean, I've seen the plan for next year, and I love the fact that we're going to talk about disability, mm-hmm. um, especially if we go into mental disability, because I have ma- major depression myself. Ooh. I know more than a couple people. Woo uh, for depression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Represent. You know, it's, it's a normal, everyday part of our lives that mm-hmm. we go through, and um, I feel like it does affect your sex life, and it affects you as a human being, therefore Absolutely. it affects everything. Right. So, um, yeah. That'd be the, the major thing that I really look forward to doing, mm-hmm. as well as the sex toy reviews. 
<laughs> so excited for this. I am, like, because, okay, ever since I joined the show, it's like I've been unleashed into this whole new world, and I feel like a whole, whole new, new world. world. Three seconds. No more than three bars. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a bar. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was, it was a bar. It was, it was a bar. Yeah, it was more than a bar. All right. We're good, though. We're good, though. We're in the limit. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, a good point. for sure. <laughs> what? No, that's not. I don't know. That's not. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> um, you were talking about a whole new world that you yeah, were yeah. So I got <laughs> so completely <laughs> sidetracked with Aladdin. Um, but yeah, a whole new world, and I'm interested just to find out even more. Like we, just, I just learned about ecosexual. Never heard that term before. I'm gonna look it up when I go home because that's what you do as a responsible person. Sweet. Well, my, fir my first response is tree love, but I don't think that's exactly. That sounds really painful. painful. That's a visual I didn't I, quite need. I imagine it. All I know is that we've got a sex toy virgin to exploit. I mean, educate. Yeah, educate. Well, We're all about yeah. education. <laughs> well, thank you, madam. <laughs> well, David, is there anything else you wish we had asked you? Oh, gosh. Like, how's my day been? How's your I day mean, been? I've been? No, I've been, it's too late now. Oh, oh. I've been fuck. sitting here the whole time. What? And no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my day's been wonderful, actually. I just did a backyard production of Ham or Hamilton, so I'm super excited. It's rad. Because you're all over the arts. So, I know. He is all you? over the arts. I do, I do, yeah, spoken word, I sing, I do, He juggles. I'm making my own album. And your organization just got funded? Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, how did I not bring that up? Yeah, uh, so the city of Sacramento actually funded a whole project that I'm working on. It's called Operation Free Soul. I'm gonna be mentoring youth poets teaching them the business side of poetry so that they can learn how to put on their own 30-minute one-person shows and learn what it takes to put a show together, how to direct a show, et cetera. Yeah. That's Operation awesome. Operation Soul. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> 5K. David is a rad person. Um, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we have some awesome uh, uh, musical content that we're going to have you listen to. We have uh, Lon Milo Duquette, who is going to be singing Sweet Babylon, and we're going to hear from our sponsors. So let's do that. Get him. People keep saying that Jesus is Lord. He'll take me in the rapture, he'll come with a sword. Preachers on TV tell me I'm living wrong. But I've tasted the lips of sweet Babylon. Sweet Babylon, oh heavenly harlot, let down your hair. And I'll pour the wine Drink to the night of sweet Babylon Queen of damnation, 
our sacred love. Abomination burned dying in your arms is sweeter than salvation. Heaven is the night of sweet Babylon. Sweet Babylon, oh heavenly harlot, lover of all, refuser of none. Hold out your cup, I'll pour the wine. Drink to the night of sweet Babylon. Heaven is the night of sweet Babylon. Hey guys, this is Sean Monkey Mackinney, Monkey for short. What you need to know now is that brown chicken, brown cow needs your love. It needs your help, and it, well, you know, personally, we could use your money. But short of that, what you need to do is go out and like our Facebook page. Number two, give us a review on whatever podcast ability you have. Go out to iTunes, go out to Google Play, give us a good review because that helps. Number three, subscribe. Subscribe to our podcast because that helps our numbers helps us with advertisers, helps us with everything. It makes it look good, actually. And number four, and this is very important. Come close to the speaker. It's fantastic. You can go out to Patreon and support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash BCBC podcast. You can support us at whatever level of support you think you can manage. I don't want you to give us money if you can't do it, but I want you to give us some money and we'll give you back some love as well. We'll give you back some stuff. We'll talk about you on the radio. Who knows? But in the end, supporting us helps keep the show going. Subscribing to the podcast gives us better numbers. And liking our Facebook page, guess what? You always know when the show's coming. So, this is Monkey. You're you. We are together. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Fantastic. See you on the next show. Brown Chicken Brown Cow! Welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show. I am Monkey. I'm still sitting here with these two crazy kids. Wow. Yeah, and hey, you know, I, I have noticed of an absence in my heart. There is a Laura who is missing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she had some business to do, so uh, we're letting her do that. But we have a recording, as I understand, yeah. of uh, the little talky talk time. That's talk. right. We did interview her, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her experiences on BCBC. Oh, wow. Yeah. We'll be right back. Oh, oh dear. Monkey's pulling us in my I'm not chicken. Do you have anything to throw? Oh, hey, hey, welcome back. Um, uh, hi. Um, this is Monkey. And, you know, we're, we're going to... What? You're still wearing your Christmas hat. I'm still wearing my Christmas hat. <laughs> yes. He wears it every other Tuesday. Every other That's Tuesday, true. remember. That's true. I'm sorry. Um, you know, um, one of our things that we're trying to do is, is uh, look back and look forward at uh, where we've come from, from as a show and where we're going to. And we're, by doing that, we're actually going to also be interviewing our uh, staff and co-hosts and guests, um, mm -hmm. uh, supporters, everything. Um, so... What we have today to do is to interview Laura. She's excited. <laughs> this, this you Laura. can see it in her eyes. She's like, <laughs> like, oh boy. Can't wait. Yes, I'm ready. Hello. Hey, Laura. So we have some questions for you. Just give us like an overview of just your life. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so uh, just tell us a little bit about your personal history as it relates to brown chicken, brown cow, maybe, or just whatever you want to tell us in regards to your personal history. Well, I am enjoying being pretty mysterious and moderately behind the scenes, so I'm going to tell you nothing. Wow, that's... And right. we're Just done. Like, thank uh, you very much for joining us. Heard the <laughs> no, no, more. Um, I mean, I can tell you a bit about how I, I got involved, and I will say um, I've lived in Sacramento for about a year and a half now. Um, and how did I get involved? So, Monkey tells me he's starting this podcast podcast and I'm very very clear I'm like there's no way I'm getting involved with this I don't do group projects with my partners it is a terrible idea and I'm too much of an aggressive person with strong opinions for that to ever work and it's never worked for me before in the past and so and so apparently she was talking and I didn't hear that so. <laughs> yeah so he just ignored that communication kids so that goes uh, so we have a day and he says, oh, well, we're going to go work on show stuff. And I'm like, all right, sure, I can sit while you work on show stuff. 
and we get here and he's like, oh no, we're going to record a couple episodes, so we record a couple episodes and then he just brings me into other things and to other things and I was like, so I guess that whole statement about not getting involved just probably isn't happening at this point, I'm just going just gonna to do it. And I, I mean, it's been, it's been fun and educational, I've learned a lot, so. Awesome. Do you have any fond or funny memories so far or anything that has uh, really uh, stuck with you of doing the show or interviews or, or interviewing guests and stuff? Um, the, the last uh, podcast, since we're using these like headphones with a little headset thing, um, and I just had bought my first one because I haven't podcasted before and I don't like play video games that involves me talking with people online. So I'm putting this on and I'm trying to figure out like, man, this is really weird, the headset with the microphones in the back and I'm trying to like get it to go the right way for like five minutes. This is five minutes of me being confused about this headset. I'm like, oh good. So it's on backwards. <laughs> my headset's on backwards. My headset's up. There you go. I was like, wow, this is really going to record terribly. Who designed these? Has it been watching Monkey on camera? It's very entertaining. I mean, it's just as entertaining as it is in real life. So. Well, that's nice. <laughs> that's awesome. It just continues, and now it's like in a place where it's recorded forever. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We're recording this? <laughs> yes. Fun. No, this is how we just casually sit down and talk to each other all the time. In yes. an interview format. Yes. yes. Um, do you have any lessons that you've learned from this show? Um, I think I've learned to be a little less, I don't know what the right word is, dismissive or respectful of other people's lifestyles. Like, I'm a pretty vanilla person, and I feel like I live a good life and I'm a good person. But I can think back on, like, moments in my life where I was like, oh, dear Lord, people do that? <laughs> um, and I, I think I've, I've, I've learned more to kind of step back and be like, oh, that's interesting, tell me more about that if I really want to know more. I mean, you're always weighing that, oh, that sounds, hmm, hmm. do I want to know more? But kind of just learning more what something's about before kind of prejudging it as something that might be terrible or not for you. Knowledge uh, is power. Yes, knowledge is power because we're all superheroes. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful. So, we, we have a lot of plans coming up for the next year and bringing the show to a new level and trying to advance us. Do you have any, uh, you know, uh, ideas or, or directions that you'd like to see the show take? I'm actually hoping we uh, cover more of our, I feel like we've talked a lot about sex positivity, but I'm hoping in the future we're really going to delve into, you know, body positivity and uh, gender positivity and really explore those aspects of, of kind of our vision for the show as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being more in those subjects. Love it. Oh. Yeah. Great. Well, Laura, thank you so much for being on the show. And, and, we're, and, we're excited. and thank you for not breaking up with me after I shanghaied <laughs> you into doing podcasts. Uh, I have nothing to do <laughs> She's just laughing, if you notice. There's, there's no... <laughs> Uncomfortable laughing. Great. Great. Now I'm just going to have to do it on purpose until you feel really uncomfortable. Oh, you too. Just saying, monkey. Diamonds are a great way to apologize. Yeah. Diamonds are I don't, I don't are know that they are. <laughs> I mean, there's is that diamonds. a monkey blush? Monkey blush -o meter Is that for? Guys, guys, this is turning into a musical. Let's just keep I'm going. sorry, I can't stop. BCBC the musical? Yes! <laughs> Where's David? He's not here. Oh. But that's a great excuse to end this segment. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, have we made you uncomfortable yet? No, I'm good. <laughs> You're a Rocky Voices? No, no, but. <laughs> I mean, we could do the back and forth. <laughs> Can we just, can we start a, like, a meter for every time Jessely gets made uncomfortable by something? Because I feel like it's that would just That's a good one, too. Too. That's not that's a good one. meter. That's not a good that one, though. That's so, so good. Great. <laughs> just when Jessely has that semi-look of horror that she's trying to keep inside, like, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we have to come up with a better name for it, though. The Jessalometer. <laughs> what bum bum. Damn, we'll be back. <laughs> And we cut. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> and welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Podcast. Ah, we're here with Heather Beth, and we have Monkey and Jessely sitting on the couch just out of view. Say hi, Jessely. Yeah, she's not mic'd up. You can't hear her. But we're actually going to talk to uh, Monkey here, the, the proprietor. 
the oh. gentleman in charge. No. The head honcho. Please. Of brown chicken, brown cow, the 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 commander in chief. All right, I'll take that one. The space invading. I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> how you doing, monkey? <laughs> I am fantastic. Thank you for that intro. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I've been wanting an intro like that uh, pretty much all my my entire life. You've been waiting. <laughs> Public domain. So you wanted one that sounds cool and then just like trails off and senselessness. I'll keep that in mind. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, so yeah, we we, we want to just kind of do a little a retrospective because it's totally January now mm -hmm. of what happened in 2017, which it's not anymore. Uh, you brainchilded, birthed, birthed this project into existence. It was a bloody mess. Um, we enjoyed it the whole time. And David and I, and a couple other folks have been super lucky to be involved with this project of your brainchilding, so thank you. Yeah, um, you're welcome. So you want to tell us a little bit about kind of, tell us a little bit about you, about why, why, why this project about you? Well, mm -hmm. I, for years and decades now, I, I, I've never just done one thing. I've always had multiple projects in the, in the, in the works. I've either worked, but I've also created, uh, written books, I've written magazines. Uh, Ladies of Steampunk is one of the more notable ones I did for a few, about five years. Um, I helped develop a, a local community here in Sacramento called um, SACFAN. That's the Sacramento Free Thinkers, Atheists, and Nonbelievers. Um, so I was uh, very uh, uh, worked with them. Very not just worked. I was on the on the board on that one. Um, and then I left that group to create another local community, which was sex positive around polyamory because I am poly and bisexual. So um, for me, it was uh, just a gradual uh, growth of, of knowledge and it's not, I won't say spiritual, but really working with people in the community to help them understand and find a place if polyamory was right for them. So I did that for about eight, almost nine years. Wow. Um, and so cool. I heard a lot of stories. I heard a lot of different people, a lot of different, um, you know, uh, diversity uh, across the board, people who were you know, who had mental disabilities, physical disabilities, as well as race and ethnicity. And so there was a lot of intersections from what I was experiencing. And at the beginning of this year, I decided, let's take it to a new level. Nice. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I just, I, I thought, you know, it doesn't mesh up with my personal career because um, I've been many different things. I've been a writer for the most part. That's what pays the bills. Um, but I've been a stand-up comedian, I've been a radio DJ, I've sung, I've acted. Um, um, I, I love the arts and performing and doing all these fantastic, fantastic things. Um, but I also like giving back to the community and that's what this show's about for me. That's awesome. I agree 100%. Um, it's a beautiful thing that we're trying to do here, I think. Um, I was wondering though, because we're going into 2018, it's already started, and I was wondering, What's your vision for the show? And actually, also on top of that, what, what, what was your vision for the show when you started? Well, the vision for the show was just being sex positive. Yeah. Because I thought that was an umbrella that would cover most subjects. Yeah. And I'm like, well, let's talk about sex positivity. And that's why we got started with sex and mental health and sex and disability and all the, you know, those type of things. And, you know, and, and talking about sex and performers. Mm -hmm. You know, what is sexy performing? Um, so I really wanted to take it to that level, but when we started getting deeper into it, we started seeing that the umbrellas were a little bit wider than that. Mm -hmm. That's why we got into body positivity mm -hmm. and gender positivity. Mm -hmm. These things all have intersections, but they, some of those items can actually stand alone, and that's what we started seeing. And so the uh, vision for it is to educate, entertain, inform, and one of the things I've always loved um, is not only performing, but late night television. I love the, the, you know, the, you know, Carson and, you know, all, all of the current crop of, uh, you know, TV late night show, funny men and funny women um, that do what they do. And that's why I wanted to bring on entertainers, mm -hmm. right? So they come for the information, they come for us, our personalities, our characters, they come for the detail and they stay, stick around to watch, oh, they have a musician? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Oh, they have comedians on the show too? Yeah. They sometimes have dancers? Yeah. The, so it's, it's that intersection of all those things that work together and blend it with our personalities and it should work. And I, th I think, actually think it is. Yeah. Great. 
That's so cool, Monkey. I, I just feel really grateful to be a part of this project. It's been, it has been everything you've said. It's been entertaining. It's been educational. Um, I've learned. I've enjoyed uh, hearing from our guests and other hosts. And um, so that so a little bit that was a little bit about your vision for the show. What are some of your favorite memories so far from <sighs> the project? You know, in, in the seven, eight months we've been doing this, there have been so many from the very start, just cre getting the graphics done. Mm. The, 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 our, our brown chicken and brown cow, that was a lot of work just mm -hmm. before you, any of you really knew what was going on. I, there's been yep. a lot of things behind the scenes to make this work well. Um, working with the professor and the madam, um, my experience the other thing, I, I said I'm a writer, I'm actually a technical writer, so I'm a technologist at heart um, as well as an entertainer. So for me, this is a really big intersection of what I love. So being able to work with the hardware, the, the cameras, the lights, the work with professionals who have years and years of experience in these industries, um, those things have been wonderful for me. The, the just being able to talk on, on, on about things and ideas and concepts and make them real. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that have really uh, taken me to a ch uh, charged area about the you know, the management, the production side of things. Right. For the shows, oh my God, Andrew Gerza, mm -hmm. he's amazing. Um, sitting down and uh, talking with our uh, vodcast about um, the Midtown Moxies. Mm -hmm. They were so engaging. I, I really, I really Super love fun. them. They're just sweethearts, totally. and uh, they're just wonderful. Yeah. Um, the feedback we've gotten from our listeners, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that we've touched them, we've helped them understand, and consensually, yeah, consensually, yeah. always, yeah. consensually. But the uh, the fact that we're moving towards a space where we're creating a voice mm -hmm. that people can learn and have fun. And, and that's that's really part of it. So um, other things that I've really enjoyed about the show are you guys. Mm. Oh, my God. Um, like I said, you've all kind of pointed at me as being the guy that pulled you in, of course, because this has been my brainchild. But there were people in this community that I felt were really going to add to the show. Mm. Right? And so, like I said, you were wonderful. Our, our madam and professor are fantastic producers. Um, Jessa Lee and David. Oh, Jessa Lee's giving me the doe eyes now. What? Oh no, she's sniffling. <laughs> she's sniffling. She's sniffling. She's all getting cry. And then, then Laura and there are other people behind the scenes. We really do a lot of work to make this happen for everybody out there. And so that is the other aspect that I really love about the show: the fact that we just get together and it feels like old friends sitting down, yeah. talking and exploring something new. Yeah. Well, shoot. I mean. Where do we go from here? What's what's your vision oh. of the future? Grand Pooba. Grand Pooba. I forgot Poobah. that one. Grand Pooba. Oh. I have a list. Brown sugar brown. Oh, I, I have list. a list. He's yes. got a list, a list. David. I have a list. Size well, eight font, as I can see. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, one of the things we're actually shooting for is to become a 501c3. Ooh, because sweet. we're an educational program, right? And we're trying to shoot for uh, educating the audience, educating ourselves. And, and I think it's ourselves probably just as much as anybody else who, who tunes yeah, in, right? That, yeah. But that will allow us to do other things and bring in new concepts or, or new processes and, and things that are behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, other things are we are just continue to improve on the vodcasts and the podcasts. We've come a long way. We've come leaps and bounds. Um, every time we do a show like this, people show up and they go, I didn't know what was going to happen because I was showing at someone's house. Mm -hmm. but then they see the production quality that we're doing, mm -hmm. right? The cameras, the lights, the seats, the, the set, the, the, the environment that we're see, there, we have going is purely the madam and the professor's work, and, and you know, I can't nod enough to them for making that happen, yeah. right? Beautiful. Thank uh, you very much. No, thank you, Professor. <laughs> I honestly had no idea what to expect when I came here. Exactly. And I, I popped in, and I was like, oh, my God, this is more professional than... A lot of things I've been involved with over the years. <laughs> um, so we're Who gonna knew that duct tape could do so much? <laughs> oh. Right, hey. Duct tape. Duct tape's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so um, we're going to be just continuing to improve on the vodcast and the podcast and the nuggets. Um, you know, vodcast will continue to be once a month released. The, the vodcast will continue to be released once a month on the last Tuesday. Um, podcasts every Tuesday except for the final Tuesday, because that's when we have the vodcast. Mm -hmm. um, then we also have, some people might not know, and they still don't know, almost every one of our podcasts are turned into little videos and put on YouTube. That's right. So people can go download it there, right? 
And then we have Nuggets, which are the bite-sized episodes. Yes. You know, little interviews <laughs> with people. Um, and we do those with, we're, we're planning to keep doing those with uh, on every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Just keep extending those out and having fun. Sorry. Um, there, there's photography happening in the audience. So. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm blushing from that one. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Monkey blusher made just The just. The Jessalee doesn't get me to blush very often, but Blushing she did that time. Five. <laughs> I wonder what the yearly total is. Five. Oh, yearly total? That's. I I'm sure the madam can find that out for you. We're going to calculate um, that. Another thing that's big that's actually happening, um, we have a website, but we're actually going to improve it. And what I mean by that is we're, uh, it's on another service now. We're going to bring it in-house and do it differently and improve what we can do with it. And so what I mean by that is um, we've kind of alluded earlier in this episode to the uh, weekly blog. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be doing blogs with product reviews and ideas and monkey musings. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to just sit down and, and talk about the subject or, or toys or whatever product is being reviewed or whatever idea we have that month. It doesn't always have to be in theme, but it's best if it is, sure. right? Um, let's see here. We're also setting up a store because, you know, we have cups. Woo, because swag. We, um, we have, we have swag. a uh, t-shirt designer on set. That's right. You know, and we also have other ideas that you may want product from the show. So those are some of the things that we're working on. Um, also on that website, you're going to be able to see a scheduled list of uh, not only events, but release dates mm -hmm. so, and themes so that people can see a theme coming up and they can contact us back because that's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, I really like this. Why don't you, uh, uh, you know, talk about this or talk to this person or I'd love to be part of that show. Yeah. So it allows the audience to be able to reach back and say hi. Yeah. And public appearances will be on that as well, correct? Monday? Exactly. That's the events. We're going to be out there in the world. Um, uh, you know, we're in Northern California, so it's kind of hard for us to go out to New Jersey unless somebody wants to fly us all out. I'm Please into it. call us, fly us all out. We all want to go to New Jersey. That's right. You're right. Why not? I'm into it. I like new things, new adventures, new exactly. experiences. New Jersey's beautiful. Exactly. If you want us to come out and do this show at your event, give us a call. We're there. Totally. Yeah. Um, so, and then, you know, just more opportunities as we grow and expand for the audience and for people in the community to come and volunteer and be part of the show. Um, because I know that there are people out there who want to be, but we haven't been able to make space because we're still kind of early in the growth cycle. Sure. So those are the things that we're looking forward to. Yeah. And, and on that, that note lot. of volunteering, because oh, yeah. um, I, I see the madam is very excited for us to actually announce this, and I am too, um, we're, our goal as I understand it, for 2018 is to transcribe our previous episodes and our episodes going forward. Um, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically we're looking for volunteers to help with that process, as I understand. And uh, yeah, we'd be grateful yeah. if we can get any kind of assistance because it's for important sure. to us so everyone can <clears throat> understand it. Yeah, that's important because we, we do care about accessibility for folks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, not everybody accesses material the same way. Some people read it, watch it visually, some people listen audially, so we want to make sure it's available to a wide variety of folks. So I'm just going to touch on some of the themes that we have coming up over the next year, because I, th I think that's kind of cool too, because we've really been working yes. hard here behind the scenes. Let's hear about the themes. So, you know, January, we're here right now, we're talking, this is the looking forward and looking back. You've watched all the episodes. If you haven't, go back and watch all or listen to all the podcasts and nuggets because you're going to hear a lot of really wonderful things about nice us, stuff. mostly about David. That is true. Mostly Me. about David. It is mostly um, about you. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. What have they um, been doing? And then, <laughs> then the uh, comments about the creepy donut eating by Jessa Lee sometimes come up. But we, we put that to bed. Um, she says she's not going to do it anymore. Uh, <laughs> That was an evil little laugh. We don't, don't believe, believe that. that. We don't believe at that at all. I believe that when I don't see it. <laughs> but uh, I believe that when I do not see it. I, I see what you did there. Because donuts are delicious. <laughs> so here we go. So in February, we have polyamory month. Everything about polyamory, we have some really good guests lined up. Uh, people like uh, Cooper Beckett from the, uh, Life on the Swing Set. Right. We have Cunning Minx. Um, she is going to come on the air with us. Um, we're also working with uh, another person from the Bay Area. He said he's going to come on. He wrote a book recently, uh, Polyamory for Men, uh, or Guides, A Man's Guide to Polyamory. It sounds like it's, you know, a little weird, but trust me, I, I think some men out there actually need this. Uh, from uh, Peppermint, if uh, any of you know him. 
Uh, we also have in March, uh, moving towards uh, things like uh, legal and uh, financial considerations for non-normative relationships. Ooh. So we're gonna talk about medical, we're gonna talk about law, we're gonna talk about financial stuff, all those cool. things that go into that. Um, guess what, A uh, April, we're talking to sex workers. Now, phone sex, cam sex, people who've worked up in the brothels up in uh, uh, Nevada, we have some really pe nice people lined up. Porn. Uh, what? Porn. Porn. Porn, sorry, I left out porn. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've done um, in my magazines, I actually created a soft boudoir, nude uh, magazine. So I have a little bit of knowledge of this, uh, of this field, at least from that aspect. Basically anybody who exchanges erotic labor for income, right? Exactly. exactly. So that's our definition of um, sex work here on BCBC. In May, we have going back to the disabilities and physical, mental, and emotional mm -hmm. uh, side of uh, sexuality. Um, June. Uh, is focused on the uh, queer or the LGBTQ community um, and Pride Month, so we're, we're going to try to get out for uh, a couple of prides, who knows. Um, July, we have artists of all types, music, uh, uh, paint, who knows, I'll just say artists in general. Um, in August, we have body positivity, so pulling that in, we're getting underneath that, that umbrella a little bit. Mm -hmm. September is consent, October is gender identity and transgender, and November, um, this is where we kind of are stopping because we have so much uh, to plan. Uh, November is sex, body, and gender positivity parenting. Excellent. Yeah. Right? So cool, Monkey. I can't, I can't even decide which I'm most looking forward to. There's oh, yeah. just a lot of stuff coming up. But the other thing is <clears throat> that I, we do have to wrap up this segment right now. Uh, I think we're moving towards a little bit of closing up the podcast, ep the podcast episode. And With? We might have... Don't I it You bring it in! You told me that I was supposed to bring it in! Welcome back to the Brown Chicken. No, 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 wait, no, wait, no wait, 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 hold okay, on. hold on. Hold on. Okay, well, you and I will, we'll, we'll okay, do, okay, yeah, hold on. We got it. In three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to the Brown Chicken Brown Cat <laughs> Podcast. My name is Jessely, and I'm here, finally. Um, to my right and to my left, I have a couple of assholes who didn't let me talk. <laughs> uh, this is David DeMola. Hi. And we have Monkey, Sean Monkey. Hello. Um, we also have these delicious donuts from Pushkin's Bakery. Uh, they are gluten-free, uh, which we got for the madam, so she could enjoy a delicious, delicious donut for all of her amazingness and hard work. But they are um, delicious, so they are delicious. we all get to enjoy. That's why I said delicious, delicious before Wait, I Wait, did that donut. one just squirt in your mouth? No, but I wish it did. Do you? <laughs> that was wonderful. I don't think David understands why his joke is funny. I don't know. Oh, I get it. Uh, <laughs> I have wonderful donut jism in my mouth. Right oh, God. Now. All right. Not going the butt, David. Uh, so, well, no, it's a donut. It goes out the butt. Oh. Wow. We just went there. We went there. What did we learn from today? <laughs> Donuts come out our butt. Mm -hmm. Is this where these came from? No. <laughs> It nope. came from Pushkin's. Pushkin's Bakery, quality donuts. <laughs> Please sponsor us. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Pushkin's Bakery. I promise I will talk. I'm going to eat this donut in a respectable manner. Uh, what, what did you guys learn? Mm. <laughs> Great. Well, I'll say what I learned This today. is one of the problems with donut time. Yeah. Um, I learned that monkey can be really loud. Oh, well, yeah. Um, I, also, I also learned a lot about all of you guys and your backgrounds, and I really appreciated it learning about that, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for sharing about your like live monkey. I had no idea, what did I just learn about you that I was like, I didn't know he did that. He I, sings? No, I know he sings. We all know he sings. Um, um, <laughs> writing? No, 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 it was something else I didn't know about you. Oh, radio? No, I knew that. Television? Oh, I didn't know that you started at an atheist free thinkers mm. organization. That's really cool, man. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I learned more about my fellow hosts and that was awesome. Uh, I learned about, well, I didn't learn about it. I learned that I should go educate myself about ecosexuality oh. and find out what it is because mm -hmm. it sounds very intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I learned I can be uh, verbose, <laughs> long winded. Um, I just learned that now, right? <laughs> Sorry, that came off set. Um, no, um, I, 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 like I said, I, I just. Because the fact we're looking forward and we're looking towards the future of where we're, we're headed and the fact that we've grown leaps and bounds since where we, where we started and we're getting uh, noticed very well in the community um, that uh, we're really trying to make it even bigger and better than what it was. 
Absolutely. So, so the encouragement from all of you and our listeners and um, the production crew here with Madam and uh, the professor, and of course the uh, uh, wonderful, our wonderful stage manager, wonderful stage manager who Yay. apparently she has an emergency offset. So. Yep. That's very smart thinking, though, to get a, a short dog. Yeah. That way, when she walks through, you won't see her. That, that is pretty smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta admit that. But you will hear the tippity taps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else anyone wants to say before we close out today's vodcast? Maybe anything about season one that we that we want to commemorate. Um, the professor and the madam learned that Jess Lee can indeed eat a donut without making obscene faces. I can. Mm. I didn't believe it. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't realize I was making everyone uncomfortable. So I, I will, you know, I just want to no. go out no. uh, with season one in a dignified way. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. I can okay. be calm. Your camera's right there. Here's your chance. I, you can do it. Jeez, monkey. Right there. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. But those days are behind me. I learned that this is one of the best crews. Sorry, Mike was off. I've learned that this was one of the best crews I have ever worked with. Aww, and that's, that's so not, nice. That's not just a Hollywoodism. Oh. That's a fact. Well, as someone who's worked in Hollywood, that's, that's quite a praise. Yeah, that's Thank pretty you. awesome. I like that. Excellent. All right, everyone. Well, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's time for us to wrap up, but I just wanted to say... I fucking knew you'd do that. <laughs> Be good to each other. <laughs> We're out. If you don't know, for our recording next month for January, we're not having entertainment on. You guys are the entertainment. Do they even make that? Well, there's like food dye. I'm not a scientist. I want to I mean, dye my vulva blue now. It sounds like a risky area. That is not going in the outtakes. And that's the quote. Cool God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> <Cold camera's laughs> Hashtag outtakes. You want to bring us in? You want to bring us in? I'll do it. I got okay. it. Oh boy. I five. trust you. High five. Yeah. Yeah. Count. Five, four. Okay. Five, four. <laughs> 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 Blue vulvas. There once was a duck in Nantucket. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. <laughs> BCBC, scene two, take one, and the professor can't spell his name. Oh. Audio's rolling, roll cameras. Um. Something like that. These bright lights. I don't know which one you're in, actually. There I guess you're straight ahead. Oh, you get either lights. one. <laughs> Lee, do you want me addressing any particular camera? Uh, Three lights. Yeah. You justify it however you I need just, to, Heather Beth. You just, um, okay. I prefer voguing Snap into like the camera. Vogue. Strike a pose. Strike Vogue. a pose. And we cut. Yay! Oh dear. He's maniacal now. <laughs> you show up, you get a parting gift. Look at all this stuff. Look at that, yeah. And we cut. Nice you work, everybody. Just a random cat face. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say get him? Get him. Okay, at the camera. Always, oh, and pointing is rude, so you really shouldn't. But like, finger gun. So we'll be back in just a second. Oh <laughs> 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 wow, guys. And we cut. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. That was, that was nailed it. Nailed it. Oh. Oh, do you have sponsors? <laughs> Yeah, it says on the thing. I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess what? It's donut time. Oh. 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 Can I? I was gonna eat, but now I'm afraid. Is there a time when we're supposed to eat the donuts? So we lied. We're not doing donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I know now. It's no. Donut time. Oh wait, we have to. Oh fuck. <laughs> 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 are we done? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
get your fuck on. <laughs> 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 <laughs>